Hi, I'm Jonah with Sweet Honey Code, and today we're going to dive into coding meta fields into a theme. So let's get started. So meta fields is a special feature of Shopify that allows you to create hidden fields that display information, either front end or something that is information for yourself in terms of admin. The latest feature that Shopify rolled out made it easier to work with this. Beforehand, you would have needed uh, third party apps. And so this new feature definitely makes it far easier. Now, before we get started, I have to throw up a little bit of a warning. The skill set for this is pretty much intermediate. So you got to be really comfortable at looking at coding and and if you haven't ever looked at coding before, it can be very scary, very daunting, and there's always a possibility of making a mistake. So I will show you some ways to help prevent breakage on your Shopify theme as much as possible, but that is my disclaimer. Uh, however you apply this to your theme, you are responsible for on your end. I'm just providing you information in the meantime. So with that, let's get rolling. So from the Shopify admin, we're gonna click settings, and click on meta fields. So once we're in meta fields, we see a few options that are currently available, products and variants. So we can create definition for these. What's exciting is the rollout for the built-in feature for collection, customers and orders down the road. Again, meta field is more of an admin information. So you're providing either information uh, publicly so customers can see it through products and variants, for example, or even on collections. But a lot of times in business, you're having like business notes that you need depending on what the customer order and things like that. Before this was released as a built-in, third-party apps was pretty much the only way you can create this information flow. So this is very exciting. Today, we're going to start easy. We're going to click on products and we're going to create a definition. So I can technically create uh, a take over or add a definition to beta fields that don't have a definition. We're not going to worry about that right now. We're going to create something new because most of the time you're creating something new that you'd rather see for your store. So we're going to click add definition. Now, the first thing you'll want to do is come up with the name of that definition. Now, the name can be a wide variety of things, and it will even suggest a few options. Right off the bat, they give you some templates. So once we click on these templates, they are pretty much set in stone. You're really can't change them a whole lot. But again, these are the most common templates that I'm sure Shopify has seen or has been requested from a wide variety of merchants as a suggestion. So I could have a product subtitle, for example, care guide, ISBN, UPC or EAM. So again, very business specific. So for today, I'm going to create my own style of care guide. So I'm going to type in care guide and move on down. Now I'm not going to do the autocomplete. I'm going to come up with my own. Now the next thing I want to take uh, into consideration is the namespace and key field. So by default, it comes up with this uh, namespace, my underscore fields. I definitely want to think of a better name. So for example, if I hit the template, it would have came up with definitions dot care guide as an option. So I could say, now I don't want to use the same namespace as like products, for example, that might seem conflicting. So let's say washing dot care guide. That makes sense. And this will group this information together. So washing dot care guide. So I could also add a bit of description for me in terms of what this is for washing instruction. So maybe I sell t-shirts or something like that. The last step is what type is this so I could go through the types and come up with an idea of what it is. Is it a color, date and time, number, uh, text and more. So let's say for now we're going to do text. And again, I could go further. Is it a single line text, multi line text? So let's do multi line text because that way I could break down, you know, do you wash and warm or something like that and additional roles. So this is again, an administrative side of the of the coin because I can make sure whoever's cataloging this information is at least typing something in here. So I could say minimal length. So maybe the minimal length for this needs to be 10, 10 characters or something like that. So I could do that if I wanted to. For now, I'm going to keep this regular. And if there's any special 
expressions. So we're going to scroll up for now and I'm going to click save. Perfect. So now it's created be this product meta field definition. Now, because we're focusing on the coding side of this, we want to make a very good note here. This right here that we see product dot meta fields dot washing dot care guide. This is what we'll need for the code side. So what I'm going to do is I pull up a coding app. So I use visual code and I want to write that down. So I'm going to do a new file and just make a note of it. So it's called product dot meta fields. Make sure you type it correctly dot washing dot care guide. Just like that. We will need this in a moment. Cool. So we have our care guide. So the other thing I want to make sure is um, that there's information for this care guide. So we're going to test this out in a moment. But now let's prepare ourselves to add the code. We're going to go to online store and to the theme section. This is another one where you could type up into the search bar to get here quickly. Now, again, I just got to throw up a warning. There's a very key step here. You want to back up and duplicate your theme. So although I'm using a technical uh, a live store that I, I owned, I definitely don't want to be adding a new feature to my theme publicly. I want to do it behind the scenes and then roll it out once things are all in motion. Plus, if you make a typing coding error, then your main theme and store is still being uh, still staying online. So what can we do here? Since this is my current theme, I could click on actions, duplicate, give the Shopify store a second here. It's creating a duplicate. And so I want to wait till it's done. There we go. So now I have a duplicate copy so I can work with the code. So because this is a duplicate copy, the other side of uh, the other thing to take in consideration is the only way to see changes is if I preview this theme, which is another bonus for why we use these this duplicate theme. So I'm going to click edit code. And here we go. Right. <laughs> so here we are. Uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to click this little square just to maximize the coding screen and make it easier. And I can even go into dark mode, which is my developer preference. So where do we look? Well, there is a lot of components, if I may, to a Shopify theme. It's it could be a video in itself. So for now, I'm going to close layouts because I know it's not going to be in layouts. But what I want to find is the product file. Again, a warning every theme is going to be different. So this is the debut theme that I've modified. So whatever theme you have may uh, most likely will have a different file name for things like products and so forth. So might take some hunting to find it. And Shopify support is not the venue to go to to find that out. You can always reach out to the developers to see if they can help you out. But uh, it is outside of Shopify support on how third party themes work. So with that, we're going to scroll down and I can go to usually the templates folder. Usually the templates folder is the folder to look for where it houses the main template for displaying the product information on the Shopify website. So as I go through again, there is a ton of code here. So what am I looking for? Well, usually one workflow for temp uh, for themes is to create what's called a section. Now, with the new online store 2.0 that's rolling out, this information will be slightly different. But for this version, which is a, an older version theme, they did use a section for handling. And I can see it right here for handling the main product template. Again, this is how this theme works. Now, within this code editor, what's pretty cool is if I hover my mouse near product template, I can click this little arrow that popped up and it will take me right away to the product template. So we have a few tabs here, product.liquid and product-template.liquid. All right, awesome. So from here, what do we do? Well, again, this is where every theme differs. Now, because this is the care guide information, the chances are I wanna put this near the store, uh, I mean, the product description. So one thing I can look up 
very clearly is description. So I could type, what I did here is, <clears throat> I'm gonna do control F, which pulls up the search field, type the word description, and if I hit the enter key, it's gonna go down a little bit, so I'm gonna keep pressing the down arrow till it comes to the spot where I want it, which is right here, product.description. Cool, so right now this would display whatever product description is available with this product, having said that. So I wanna add something new here. <clears throat> so what I wanna do is I'm gonna do a, a return and just kinda create a little space. Now, one thing to consider is with meta fields, they don't really come with any formatting. So in terms of, it, is it wrapped with a paragraph or anything like that? So it's gonna look a little bit ugly, ugly and you're gonna see that. Now with liquid code, it usually has a double bracket for things that are uh, just displaying pure information. So like, for example, as you can see here, product.description is in curly brackets, which is very, it's very important to note that they use these double curly brackets. And now remember how we saved that information right earlier? We just copy that text for our meta field and paste it right here. Cool, right? So we could click save, which is awesome. Now, because I am now under this copy of my theme, I can click preview. So what preview will do now is it's gonna take me to this preview theme of this site. Now, the problem is I don't have any information here. So chances are it's gonna display right about here because this is the product description. So I need a way to test this out. So let's do that. I'm gonna click on that square to minimize the coding. Go to products. Since I have the Valentine's product pulled up, I'm gonna go there. Scroll on down because it's on the bottom. And so let's add a few washing instructions. So rinse on hot. I know I just spelled rinse wrong. Wash on hot. Uh, I'm just, you don't, you can, don't have to do any special uh, formatting like I did there. Wash on hot and um, rinse on cold. Cool. So what I'm going to do is click save. So because this current theme I have is not going to display it. And if I wanted to see that, I could click more actions view and see that right now customers don't even know this code change is occurring, which is cool. So because I'm working with multiple windows here, so I'm going to hover over my edge, find that preview window, give it a moment. Uh, if it didn't refresh it, I will actually go back to my code, which is this tab here. As you can see, this is very common to have multiple tabs running, especially with code. Going back to themes, down to action, edit code. There are some other ways I usually work with this that kind of streamlines it. It's going to pull back up to where I was last, which is product.liquid. I'm going to click preview this time again, kind of click on that, and it is right here. Wash on hot, rinse on cold. Just like that. So that's looking really cool. Now, of course, there is some formatting concerns here that are currently not available. And the problem with meta fields is they can only be directly accessed. So there's no way to run an if statement on this. Really, there might be a way, but there's no way to run a, a thorough if statement to say if all these fields exist, do this. But because it's squished, one thing I could take consideration here, if I scroll on down, back to product.description. Again, I could search for it. Product dot description, which is right here, is I could wrap this in paragraphs. So I'll bracket P, bracket close P, just like that. Cool. Now, one thing I could definitely do is add a comment. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add a liquid comment, which is curly bracket. And at percentage, I'm going to do, it's a dash comment dash, oops, spacebar dash, percentage like that. And I'm just gonna add added 
meta field. Now the reason for this is you may want to find this again. And so this comment kind of tells you what this was. Add beta fields for washing instructions. You, let's be honest, in a year or two from now, you won't remember why you added this. So I'm going to do a close comment, which is the same beginning curly bracket with a percentage dash. Uh, and then you do end comment. There you go. And we know it's correct because it, it stylized it. And there we go. Of course, if I look up here, here is already a comment up there that I could have used as a way to format this. So that looks cool. And then I'm going to click Save. But there you go. Oops. Now, so oh, we have an error. So let's take a look. Errors are good means something did not go according to plan. Do, do, do. Where is it? It said it didn't close. That is actually, oh, you know what? I did an alligator sign instead of a curly bracket. See, coding, there's always room for mistakes. That would that could have crashed my site. That's actually a nice safeguard that Shopify throws in there too because that could have went really haywire. So I'm gonna click preview one more time. Valentine's, and now there's actually spacing. So I could like take this further and go, uh, if I do a B tag, that would be bold. Uh, washing instructions. So as you could probably tell, there's going to be one problem with this is um, if someone didn't input washing instructions, this text is going to display with no washing instructions. There is possibly another way around it, which is I'm developing a more thorough coding course behind this. So if you're interested, please, by all means, let me know. And um, you can also support me through buymeacoffee.com forward slash sweet honey code, where I will be, uh, for anyone who supports me there, I'll be definitely notifying you first and when it's ready. So cool if I go to All About Valentine's, there it is, washing instructions, wash on hot, cold, so forth. So again, I would want to take consideration how this washing instructions is being outputted. There's probably a few ways I could work with that. But for this video, this is definitely um, as far as we could take it for at least this video and getting you started. So we walked through a lot of different steps, which is essentially creating those meta fields. So we start off with the meta field, adding it to a product and deciding what kind of meta field we're going to work with. Then we went to the online store and added that code with the last step being adding the data to the product. Now, of course, you could always add the data to the product and then uh, add the code in it as well. The one good news is with the online store 2.0, which is what I'm going to di hopefully dive into with another video. Uh, will make this process a little easier because let's be honest, this is already adding code to a theme is already a an area of danger zone because so much can go wrong, especially if you're not a proficient developer. As you see there, I am and I actually made a typing error because I'm human. So <laughs> it could happen to me. It could happen to you. So with the future proofing that's coming down the road is it's going to be a lot easier for your Shopify store in the long run. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment down below. I appreciate any feedback. And again, please consider supporting me on buymeacoffee.com forward slash sweet honey code. The link is in the description and I'll be working on future videos just like this and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.